Hey all, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. We're now delving in to our first topic of the day, and it's about the presidency and Zamfara State, as well as the 279 girls that have been freed. The president issued a statement yesterday saying he felt overwhelming joy that the schoolgirls had reunited with their families. He also gave an order that all the bandits, kidnappers in Nigeria should be apprehended and also made a promise that the Zamfara abduction will be the last in Nigeria. Let's invite now Chooks and Woko to discuss this with us. Good morning. Morning to you. I'd like to first get your reaction to the news. It was a very tense situation this past few days, you know, about the, the abduction of these girls. They've been eventually released. How do you react to this? My concern um, as a father and as a citizen, it's why our girls being targeted. A society that, that wants to develop and, and make progress should treat the girl child with, with, and our women with, with profound respect. Now, it, that, that's a deeper meaning for me. Um, but just to answer your question, I, I don't think this is the end to the adoptions and kidnapping that's going on in northern part of Nigeria. And, and the simple reason I say so is because nobody has been punished for such a, a stupid act in the past. And, and leadership has not been demonstrated where you punish people for wrongdoing. So it, it's going to happen again and again and again. I, I, I am not interested in, in all the rhetorics. I am upset with the fact that the girl child, which, who should be pampered, who should be educated, who should be trained to, to be like Ngozi Okonje Wala, like uh, Mrs. Clinton, Hillary Clinton, like, like all the other women that are doing well, is being harassed, is being kidnapped, is being violated, is being disrespected, rather than being reinvented so that we can reinvent the country. And this should make all of us cry. All right. This should make all of us feel bad. All we should right. be asking Okonji Wala, Mr. Okonji Wala, to come and be president in 2023. We are not discussing that. All right, Mr. Woko, let me let me step and, in here. I'm thinking of giving MST and money to to bandits. I I think that the body language of Mr. President and, and his team has continued to encourage this kind of behavior. And so my reaction is that it's going to happen again. All right. Well, let, let's let's hope you know that um, it doesn't happen again. And also to quickly mention, um, yes, you know, strong points about the girl child and how they must be protected. Um, but it, 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 I think it should also be said, you know, that every Nigerian, male or female, there was also the Kagara school boys um, that were kidnapped not long ago that were freed. Um, so it's 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 not just a girl child that is um, you know going through this uh, situation. But I, would, I want to ask what things you feel we must not ignore with all this that is happening. Um, earlier, our guest had mentioned, you know, how, you know, the, the, the perspective with regards negotiation, the controversy over, you know, Governor Matawale and saying that he knows, you know, who they are or he doesn't know who they are. Um, the fact that they were able to transport almost 300 Nigerians um, through numerous kilometers, you know, to, to wherever they kept them until they are released. There's many details that the Nigerian government should not in any way ignore. So I want to get your thoughts on, on those, you know, as we move forward. Um, what are the things that you feel we must continue to press the government on? First and foremost, um, I, I need to address you and, and address all of us then. I will address what the president needs to do. First, we run a system of government that we are not supposed to be running. I say that because if you remove political party politics from our system, we're going to have peace. Why? Because the crisis that you and I face, whether it's in the Niger Delta or in the Northeast or in the Northwest, I trace it to elite poverty and elite, um, elite problem. These people are seeking for political power. They are seeking for access to our wealth because Nigeria is a blessed country. And so they do these things, they instigate this crisis. That is what I needed to say to you 
and, and to your colleague and to myself and to the generality of ordinary Nigerians, that we are operating a system that is not functional, that is not rewarding, that is the cause of this problem. Now, to the president, I, I think that, I, and I have said this many times at, at different um, occasions, the problem that we are faced with in the, since 2015 is put at what I call ethnic loyalty. Uh, if you go back to Nigeria's history in 1964, you'll find out that every time you have a president in this country, people from his tribe will constantly cause crisis in the country. Uh, with the exception of Obasanjo, Obasanjo is not really accepted in his area. But when he was president, we had peace. And I mean, we had crisis, but he dealt with it severely, and and and, and he dealt with it squarely. Now, the most recent event that we had uh, in in the country was when the former president uh, Jonathan was uh, was was in Asoro. You you had people like Orisa Jaffo who became, you know, whether it was a, a minister of transportation or whatever. So you are not dealing and discussing the issue of Nigerian consistent crisis tied to ethnic loyalties. We never used to have this level of crisis until Buhari, Buhari became president. Then you have full and knee yes men and you have full and knee crisis. They are compelling us now to change our language. Until he leaves that place, we are not going to have peace from, from people from his tribe. So what he needs to do is to make up his mind today to become president of all Nigerians and punish people who are doing wrong. It's as simple as that. But if he's not able to speak to us, if it's not able to deal with it, then we need to uh, live with it and 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 and, and just condone him and, and and accept him and accept the crisis until another person comes, becomes president, and the people from his tribe will begin to trouble Nigeria. That that is what we're dealing with. Except he makes up his mind that he's a president for all. But he, he's a president I respect because of all the other things he's done that is positive. I voted for him. I, I have always liked him since 1983 and 1984. He, he's done things recently that I like. I, I, I like the things that are going on in, in Niger Delta in the Southeast with the transportation system and other stuff. But this one national problem of insecurity, I, I think that in that area he hasn't done well. And, and, and the statement they are going to fight now and put an end to it is an indication of what I'm saying, that he hasn't done what he was supposed to have done. Okay. People need to be punished for wrongdoing. That's the order we know in this country. When he was military president, he dealt with indiscipline. But now, I, I don't know what he's doing with indiscipline and recklessness and violence and disruption and vandalism and destruction of life and property. It's not doing, it's not doing enough. So we have encouraged him by speaking at different forums. If you haven't called me into your program today, I have stopped talking because I don't think anybody's listening. Hmm. So he needs to to, to step into the plate and and do something about this problem. By the way, um, these criminals are known to their sponsors. Um, by the way, um, uh, um, conflict entrepreneurs must sell weapons of warfare. And and just to, to make to say something to you, why I'm concerned about the gay child is that his men are fight wars all over the world. Women don't don't fight wars. I, you don't take women captive. Because of their uniqueness, if you want to take women into captive, it's not the get child who is in school. It's disrespect for, for a nationhood. They are, they are the ones who build homes. They are the ones who build nations. They are the ones who bear children. Why should we take a girl or a woman into captivity, uh, kidnap a woman or take her into captivity? For what? If you want to find war, take the boys, give them gun, let them engage in war. Why are you taking a girl? It's okay. disrespectful. Mr. Woko, no, no, I, I... Nobody should be taken, um, by the way. Hmm. I wanted to draw attention to a controversy regarding the amount of girls that were kidnapped. When the news of the abduction broke out, the official figure we heard was 317. It was all over the news. And when they were released, we heard from the government that only 297 had been freed. And a government spokesman coming out to say that the actual number was 279. I don't know what your thoughts are on this because we've had cases in the past where girls are kidnapped and only a number of them are released. But here the government is saying the actual number of girls kidnapped are 279. What are your, your, your thoughts on this, really? The, the, numbers, the numbers for me doesn't, mean any, doesn't, doesn't uh, make any meaning to me, even if it's just one girl that was kidnapped. 
Don't forget that Leah. Remember Leah? Shuabi Leah hasn't returned from captivity for how many years? Uh, I am a father of three girls. So it, it might just be communication uh, issue here, or communication, uh, uh, you know, disruption here. But I, and especially when it concerns government, there might be, um, you know, discrepancies here and there. And maybe they are still holding back some girls um, by these bandits. So m I, I think that the, the number here at this point does not matter to me. What is important is that somebody needs to be held accountable for what has happened. You don't disrespect a nation by kidnapping the girl child. Because the people who are doing this, is a woman gave birth to them. And maybe some of them are married. Maybe some of them have a girl child. Why are you taking another man's uh, daughter into captivity? Do you know what it feels like to lose your... I have three daughters. You come and take one of my daughters, and you think I'll be able to, to, to leave? You will take a part of me. So you... I, I think that these people who lead us should ask themselves the same question. If their daughters are abducted or kidnapped, how will they feel? So they need to go after these people. And, and stop all these discrepant, all these, uh, all these um, contradictions okay. that, 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 are, that are going on. Do you, do I mean, you are, you are a lady, and, 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 and you, are, you are doing doing stuff with your life, you know, fulfilling purpose and destiny. But another person's phone is being truncated by some misguided elements that were they were brought into this world by irresponsible parents. Wow. I, I think that government should become a parent to all of us by dealing and disciplining these people. I discipline my children when, when they go out of line. Why right. do you want to be a president? Be, be, Why do you want to be a governor when you can Before we go. Uh, tell us the difference between wrong, evil, and, and good. These guys are perpetrating evil and they're being, being pampered and being, and, and, and being left to do what, continue to do what they're doing. All Your right. colleague told me that, that let's hope this will not be the la uh, this will be the last time. I can guarantee you that this will not be the last time because it's become a money-making venture. Okay, so, so do you think that we will reach a, a, a break, breaking point as a nation if this continues? From your predictions? By the way, uh, by the, way the, the, the nation of Nigeria, eh? the, the nation of Nigeria, a lot of, a lot of people don't understand what Nigeria stands for. They don't understand what the makeup of Nigeria is. You know, let me explain to you what's going on here. What is going on here is the fact that some elites, do you understand, who are not in political position, they are not president, they are not governor, they are not ministers, they are not in one committee or the other. They are the people who cause these problems. Because they are seeking to bring down existing government, or they are seeking attention to get money, or they, every time they fall out of political favor, this is what they do. It's been it's been going on since 1999. They cause a distraction for the government in power. They are seeking for money. They are seeking for relevance. Look, let me tell you, the entity called Nigeria is intact. I don't know where you are from, but you know, I live I live somewhere in Lagos here, and I'm in good I'm in good terms with my neighbors outside the Yorubas. I don't know where you're from. Me and you, we don't have a problem. You work in an organization. You coexist with your colleagues. You're not fighting. These politicians are not fighting. It's these misguided elements, these troublemakers, these conflict merchants who are causing this problem and, and, and making it look like Nigeria is on fire. Nigeria is not on fire. Uh, Mr. Mr. Oko, we'll run out of time for uh, this segment here. We really appreciate you coming on to talk about uh, security in Nigeria. All of these things have been commercialized. I mean, the people who head those organizations and those who, are, who work in those institutions, they are Nigerians. What you see is the same thing that I told you at the beginning of this conversation, that if you remove political party politics and remove all this, whatever, and we'll go back to the way we used to be governed, because democracy is being forced on many nations, including Nigeria. Thank right. you, we Mr. Woko. We have been here before democracy came here. Mr. Woko, thank, thank you so very much. much. We're well, sorry we had to interrupt, yeah. but we really run out of time at this time. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me on your program. Okay, All let's... Uh... And um, that's a totally different conversation, you know, about Nigeria's unity and, you know, about the political angles to all of this. You know, I, I think what's most important is, you know, the that Nigerians continue to um, demand, you know, government plays its role and plays its part, you know, in, you know 100% with regards to protecting the lives of every Nigerian girl child boy child every child anybody yes. um, every single nigerian life matters and you know there's certain you know details that i feel we should not ignore with all of this but thanks to chooks wonko for joining us
Uh, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're talking about public-private partnerships with regards infrastructure. There's a one trillion naira project that, of course, the government has uh, taken steps towards, and we'll tell you about it when we come back.